presents exciting new opportunities for the investment-minded, but it's also volatile and accelerating in complexity. That's why we created Token Metrics, an intelligent crypto platform backed by an industry-leading combination of data, AI, and media that feeds optimized portfolios to crypto investors. Featuring Token Metrics ratings to help you find the best investment opportunities in real time, an indices page that showcases various model portfolios and deep insights into price predictions and technical analysis, a dedicated NFT dashboard that evaluates NFT collections and assets by our machine learning algorithm to find the most profitable and secure NFTs across all available blockchains. Plus, with access to Token Metrics TV, monitor 24-7 exclusive crypto news and analysis. Whether you're a first-time trader or a seasoned crypto investor, you can stay informed and in control, backed by your all-in-one crypto companion, Token Metrics. Take control of crypto today at tokenmetrics.com. We are live. This is the Market Update CPI edition. I'm your host, Bill Noble. If you need a roadmap in crypto, subscribe to this channel. Turn on alerts so you know when we're going live or... We're posting a new price prediction video. And of course, to help us with the YouTube algorithm, please hit the like button. If you're a customer of Token Metrics, right, or you want to become a customer of Token Metrics, please be sure to log in to tokenmetrics.com. And of course, don't forget about Astrobot Society. Lifetime memberships are available for our special Discord Alpha group. We all know that the people in that alpha group did, did well. We were fortunate. So check all that out. Now let's welcome who's on the stream. We have Bull Runner here first. We have CB, Lotmo Crypto. Welcome. Okay. Rugby Performance Lab, Richard Barry from Georgia. Okay. Hosea from Alabama. I am back. Yes. Flip Burger is here. The Warpler, a lot more crypto. We are live. Okay, we have crypto here from Turkey, right? MMK56 says, we want more, okay? We will get you more, okay? Baby Whale Texas in the house. Dr. McL <laughs> Dr. M, what's up? Toronto in the building. Aiken with the notorious love, welcome. Kim Craig is here, wrong again. How about this bounce? How about it? How about it? Okay, Philip, Sheepdog, and Notorious Love in one comment. Okay, somebody thinks I look like James Bond. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, yes, Bill, you still have a blue shirt. I have not gotten a green shirt yet. Although I am shopping, as you can tell from the backdrop, I do need to do more shopping, right? I'm waiting for inflation to come down. Just kidding. Just kidding. Okay. We have Montreal here. We have Driftless says we need some perspective. Philadelphia is here. We have the Far East. Welcome. All right. Denmark, New Jersey, right? Aloha, Astrobot Society in the house, Hawaii. Okay. And of course, Detroit and our friends in Italy. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Pat says CPI wasn't good. No, it wasn't. All right. But let's talk about what's good and what's not good. Right. Yesterday's uh, webinar, we did what is seen and unseen. Is it time to be a technical analyst or is it time to sort of let the world's problems take over? Every day is different. Like we've gone from like Monday was despair, Tuesday was hope. Right. Wednesday was, I don't know. Thursday was disaster in the morning. And then by the time he got back from the coffee break, it was euphoria. So going to zero, going to 100K, which is it? Let's talk about it. Okay. Let's start with the news. Okay. Because there's a lot more to the news than just the news. Okay. Let's check with our friends, the economists <laughs> at the New York Times. Okay, the New York Times, okay, a very progressive newspaper 
where I would imagine you don't have many people who took economics. So let's see what they have to say about the report, right? And let's not make fun of them. Let's just say that they're journalists reporting the facts. So CPI rose 8.2%, okay? Stubbornly high result given costly food and rent. We'll talk about rent more. Okay, inflation came in much faster than expected. Bad news for the Fed. Okay, no, actually the Fed's fine. It's bad news for us. We're paying the prices. It's also hopefully bad news from the people who created these policies, like Ben Bernanke, former Fed chairman, who just won the Nobel Prize. I have to put like, when I heard that, I have to put like a mattress behind my chair in case I fall over, right? The guy that creates QE forever with the highest inflation print in 40 years, he gets the Nobel Prize. Okay, so it's not bad news for the Fed. It's the bad news for people paying the prices. It's also bad news for whoever's, whoever can be voted out of office. Okay, disappointing inflation data keeps Democrats on the offensive ahead of the midterm elections. I actually think today's release is more about politics than economics, meaning it's going to have a huge impact on what happens at the, at the polls. Okay. Food prices climb again, weighing on household budgets. Now, rent remained rapid, a troubling sign. Used car prices aren't declining as much as economists hoped, and it's bad, 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 along with retirees getting an 8.7% Social Security's cost of living wage, good for Uncle Sam for protecting our senior citizens. Now, this is the data. Now let's discuss the analysis of the data. Jim Cramer, who, like me, has to produce television every day, right, and was probably shocked by the market's reaction off the number because people expected the number to be better, okay? And it wasn't better than expected. It wasn't. So Jim Cramer says when the market is going down, when everything in the CPI is going up and you can catch it and learn it and see it. And okay, sorry, let me say this again. When everything in the CPI is going up and you can catch it and learn it and see why it is a shock. Okay, so this speaks to the emotion of what was going on after the number was first released, right? So like me, Guys who do TV on daily and he tweets all day sometimes can get caught up in the emotion of the moment. Meanwhile, okay, okay, Ian Shepardson, okay, says, and this is very important about rent, evidence of falling inflation is everywhere except in the inflation data, okay? The Fed's choice, wait because the pipeline will work through and inflation will moderate or keep hiking until inflation starts to fall, ignoring lags, meaning prices of things are already falling out of bed. I can get a 50 inch TV for my empty apartment for 250 US. That's probably about one fourth of what it would have been during COVID, okay? So you can keep hiking until inflation starts to fall there's no support in economic theory for doing so as inflation expectations are anchored, meaning people don't really expect prices to go up. Yes, the number is somewhat shocking, but people don't expect inflation to go to 10%. So the Fed should stop tightening. Now that's a complicated economics argument. Let's try something a little less complicated. Okay, let's like, you know, dive in a little deeper. So housing is a huge part of inflation and rentals are not budging in the foreseeable future with interest rates rising. In other words, everyone's freaking out about the rent component of CPI. Well, of course, rents are higher, right? Rents where I live in Texas are parabolic. Why? Because nobody can afford to buy a house. Housing prices have not dropped and interest rates have tripled. So who can afford to buy a house? No one. So everyone has to rent. Do, do you think the people that have properties to rent don't know this? These people who got hosed by legislation allowing people not to pay rent during COVID? I mean, I understand it was like a human mercy rule, 
But do you think there's going to be any mercy on rents when they know you can't rent? Okay, making homeownership affordability less attainable for the middle class. Can't buy a home, must rent. Now, this is key. And I have, it's been a while since I've heard this. Inflation is now structural. And the Fed won't fix it by hiking rates. In other words, you've got this cycle of higher mortgage rates equal higher rents equal higher mortgage rates equal higher rents, right? That's called structural inflation. And no matter how much they tighten, it's not going to fix it. If anything, it's going to make it worse. It's going to make it worse. All right. So moving on over, stocks erase losses after CPI, after ECB headlines. So the European Central Bank is trying to dream the big dream that, you know, inflation is 2%, right? That's what they think inflation in Europe is going to be. And that's basically a nice way for the European Central Bank to tell you that they can't raise rates anymore or their whole system will blow up. That's how I read that, right? We just can't do anymore. We don't want to do anymore. All right. Meanwhile, okay, back at the policy error ranch, U.S. economy will start losing 175,000 jobs a month, Bank of America warns. So, in, uh, I'm sorry, employment or unemployment is often a lagging indicator. So, great jobs reports now will probably be bad job reports later. The Fed is going to hike rates until people lose their jobs. And I realize that makes people really angry because, believe it or not, there was like a 10 year period after the great financial crisis where nobody could get a real job unless you had computer technical skills. Okay. So, like I said, the Fed wants to hike until they break things. Great. Okay. The market may be telling you, and again, the market may have changed since the news article, the news review started, but the market may be telling you that, okay, you know what? It's time to buy the bad news. Okay. Coin Center files lawsuit against Treasury over tornado cash sanctions. Amazing. We don't have the news clip up here, but Janet Yellen, Treasury Secretary, was actually concerned about the amount of liquidity in the treasury market, meaning she's concerned that people won't be able to buy and sell, creating a debacle like what happened in England. Okay, it's amazing that the treasury actually had time to deal with tornado cash when there may not be enough liquidity in treasuries. Okay, pick on tornado cash while the world is blowing up. What a fantastic job our government is doing. Top Fed officials sound alarm on stable coins could pose a risk to financial stability. Here's a question. Were there any stable coins involved in the UK pension system debacle? No, there were not. Okay. Now we know the risk of stable coins. We all watch Terra Luna. Why, why do legacy central banks focus on the problems that they're assigned to solve, not stepping over into crypto, right? Where they're like, oh, the big problem's over there. No, dude, the big problem is right in front of you. Seriously. Seven Web3 forms, firms form alliances focusing on data privacy. And look who I got highlighted down here. One of the companies is Secret Network from Secret Labs. Okay, at Consensus this year, a full NFT movie was released on this network. You can buy and sell NFTs there without people being able to look in your wallet. Privacy will not be just for pirates. It will be something for regular people. Now, I like Zcash. I was assuming Zcash could scale, assuming Zcash could scale using proof of stake. And now the government is after proof of stake. Well, at least they won't be after Zcash right now because it's proof of work. Now you may be wondering, okay, Bill, well, that's nice. Why might you need privacy? <sighs> Elizabeth Warren calls Texas a deregulated safe harbor from for Bitcoin miners. Okay. A letter from Elizabeth Warren and six other Democratic senators demands financial and operational information about Bitcoin mining in Texas. 
There's a famous saying where I live. It's called, don't mess with Texas. Okay. So on behalf of all Texans, all right, I want everybody to read my mind about what I think about this political. I want you to read my mind. All right. And imagine what I'm thinking about the people on this end of the political spectrum. Okay. Now that you've read my mind, you know what I think about these people. Okay. Here's what I can tell you about this wing of the American political system. Their money is their money. Your money is their money. That's just how they think. That's what they want. And one day, one day, you have to assume that they will be in power. When is the time to get ready for that? Right after this market update. Okay. So that's the news. And now we're going to go to like, I don't know. This isn't even live TA anymore. It's freestyle TA given the volatility. So here is the four hour Bitcoin chart and I have to make sense of it. All right. So I look at it and I go, Hmm, this is hidden pivot analysis. Okay. Why is it hidden? Well, because when you draw this type of structure, right, you use the Fibonacci extension tool, right? Okay, and you set it up for 0.25, 1, and 0.5. You can even throw in 0.75 if you like. But basically, this is a way to forecast when a move might come to an end. Okay, so it was down. Then there was a retracement. This is a little outside the box, but it gave you a target of 18.3K. And that's where you got to. Now, most likely, again... Because Bitcoin has, again, climbed inside this range after making a lower low, right? This is where range traders make their living, right? Everybody is selling down here. Everyone is buying up here. Okay. And I would argue, even though I think deep in our hearts, we know that the top of inflation is here, that they're going to jam rates higher. Let them. Let them. Okay. Now, speaking of rates... Let's briefly go back over here. Actually, no, let's do Ethereum first. Okay. So here's ETH, four hour chart. <clears throat> so this is kind of a thing of beauty. Okay. I believe. Boom. Okay. There's the hidden pivot method, implying a low of 1191. And today's low is 1190. Okay, so this down structure in ETH looks to be complete and ETH is sort of, it's, it's kind of outside the range, okay, a little bit. But let's just take a look at one thing regarding ETH. So this is the four-hour chart. Whoops. Oh. Again, welcome to Freestyle TA, okay? <clears throat> Now, this is the merge high at 2000, okay? In, in Bitcoin in 2020, okay, Bitcoin dropped 40% from the pre-having high, okay? ETH, as we just showed it near 1190, okay, ETH is roughly, oh, at today's low, ETH was 41% below the merge high. Just like what Bitcoin did in the last halving. So a lot of people have a thousand, you know, God, I mean, if it went down there, I don't know, that would be the end. I swear. So some people talk about a thousand in ETH. Some people talk about it coming unglued. Okay. I have such a hard time being negative with ETH down 40% off the merge high. So it's 40% off the merge high. And if we zoom back in, right. So that's the big picture. And then the small picture comes from the hidden pivot analysis. Boom. Okay. And frequently these blue bars are called squat bars. They come from 
the work of Bill Williams, you know, blue bars usually come plus or minus one or three bars away from an extreme. So I'm thinking that whatever happened here at 1190 is going to be a bottom. You know, the only question is, will be will people be willing to pay higher prices for ETH? Now, let's go over to PAX, right? Since I got, you know, I got hosed again on gold, but I don't care because I'm just going to keep going back to it because I'm convinced the dollar is done. And we'll go through that, right? Notice no one's talking about the dollar this morning, okay? So the hidden pivot work on the 89-minute chart of PAX had a downside target of 1639. This is why there's no PowerPoint today. I don't, I don't even know if I would have drawn this with the market down. But when I saw the market turn, I was like, hmm, I wonder if that was the bottom, and it might be. Okay. Also, I mean, when you look at this in PAX, I mean, look at look at the new lows that this thing has made, and look at the higher lows in the momentum indicators, just at a tactical level. So, I mean, we talked about this all week on the market update, you know, on tokenmetrics. The dollar, I cannot go with the dollar. I cannot say, oh, I love the dollar. The dollar is going higher. You know, that's been a trade that I think has been going on for, I don't know, months, if not years. I mean, really, the major bottom in the dollar was 2014. And I think what we're watching is some sort of gigantic buying climax in the dollar. Now, let's go see where DXY actually is today. All right. So on the market update recently, we've been discussing how in legacy, okay, sometimes... You'll get a down move like we had in DXY, okay? And then you will get a 76% retracement. That's common in stocks. So, of course, as is classic to the foreign exchange, the legacy foreign exchange market, they go up here, they locate the stops, they run them, and then they drop this thing. Okay, now if we go to the daily chart of the dollar index, okay, my parabola is not as good as the guy that I follow that draws the parabolas. That's spiralcalendar.com, okay? His parabola is much more sophisticated, and his parabola would indicate, like, he, he, he indicates it, like, sort of being, like, right there. Like, that's how he is drawing his parabola. He makes it way tighter. He's, he's got some sort of parabola function on, on, his, on his system. So he actually thinks the dollar is way closer. It's literally in his version. It's way closer than it is right now. Wait, actually, I have it. Let me show it to you. If you're if you if you're waiting, there's a pause. This is worth waiting for. Okay. So here is Spiral Calendars. Chris Car Carolyn's parabola in the DXY. Okay. All the DXY has to do is go sideways to break the parabola. It's as simple as that. And that's what's going to happen. I mean, it is happening, right? It's happening. I don't understand how anybody can look at the dollar index. Okay. Now let's, let's try and play around. Let's get this off of here because we're going to leave the parabola drawing to the professionals. Let's take a look and see what we can glean off, say, a four-hour chart of the dollar. Or actually, let's try a daily chart. So let's try hidden pivot analysis. I, again, people, this is, this is freestyle at its finest. Okay. So the hidden pivot analysis said the top in the dollar should have been something like 112. That's one way to draw it. Oh, God, no. Yellow card. Okay. All right. Let's start over. Dollar index. Let's try hidden pivot analysis. Let's maybe try the four hour chart and see what we get. Okay. So this is DXY. This is the four hour chart. This is the tactical view. What are we going to get from hidden pivot analysis? Okay. So what we got is 
a top right around 113.80. And notice, they tried to take it through. They did take it through up here, right? So this is very emotional. And I'm just going to label all this. And hopefully you like that. If you do, feel free to comment down below. Okay. This is the dollar index four hour chart. This is the emotional move higher. Okay. And this may have been the actual top. So I zoom in on this, keeping the dollar index four hour chart there. Okay. I cannot possibly be the only person who knew this was here. Okay. The dollar is topping. Why? Well, inflation's topping. The Fed's going to go too far. Our deficits are out of control. And the Treasury has convened its financial stability board. I mean, Janet Yellen yesterday was talking about, hey, we don't know if there's enough liquidity in the Treasury market. We're afraid of what's happening in England is going to happen to us. Okay. Just a brief review, right? Here's what happened to Sterling, right? When they lost liquidity in their guilt market. Okay. Sterling went from 122 in August to 104. Okay. So this like colossal emotional overshoot on the hidden pivot analysis was right here. Okay. If this happens in the dollar and people in the United States think this can't happen in the dollar. It can. It can. Right. Just as soon as people realize the Fed's making a huge mistake, which I think is why people are buying Bitcoin, buying stocks, buying everything because they're done. All week, last week, whenever you see me, I keep saying they have to be done. Let's go to the let's go to the stock market. Okay. So we've been making kind of a living on the, you know, four hour chart of S and P, right? We have lower lows in price and we have higher lows in RSI and in the Williams oscillator. Okay. And we've been making a living using these fib speed resistance lines. Okay. Let's try an outside the box trend line maybe. Okay. So it hits support around 3540 okay and i don't think i like this trend line but the point is have stocks priced in the worst or are they going to get killed by earnings season so this could go lower right based on the hidden pivot analysis not i don't just not making stuff up here okay so stocks went farther than anyone thought they would. I'll try to find any signal for a bottom and see what I get. Nothing. One more time. Okay. So is that a good structure? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. I mean, it is interesting that when I draw this particular structure, that this actually was resistance. So this started to break down, right? Then it comes all the way back up here and then it came all the way back down and actually hit the target. You're not gonna see that very often, okay? The point is, I don't know, risk assets are like, uh, you know, maybe I'm over this, maybe, okay? So this is the two-year note government bond. This is the interest rate on the US two year note. Okay. Obviously, given the fact that the Fed is going to hike rates, no matter what we say, okay, this is the thing that goes up the most because it's more sensitive to the Fed than anything else. Okay. So with this, you know, you have to be careful that it doesn't wind up going to like 485. That's, that's your Fed threatening 5% Fed funds. Okay, so if you look at this, you're like, okay, well, this is scary, right? Does that make me want to buy Bitcoin? Ugh, it doesn't. <clears throat> it doesn't, but 
It doesn't mean I may not want to buy Bitcoin in a week. Again, a lot of times when you have these numbers like CPI, sometimes, as you've noticed, the first reaction is always wrong. So it was like despair, euphoria. Then I think tomorrow morning you're going to wake up and figure out what's really up. What's really up. The point is certain sectors of the economy are going to crater. And the next two rate hikes break everything. Right. So if they actually do take the two-year note up here, oh God. Okay. So there's really no credible way to draw this. I can draw it. It's actually not terrible. Okay. I would love it if this was true. So, I mean, this is live TA to an extreme, right? Literally, I'm just trying to say, all right, can I draw a structure that makes any sense that would indicate that 442 is a top? If 442 is not a top in the two year, the other structure I drew points to 485. Okay. Now, if you're still watching, let's try to do the same thing in the 10 year note. And let's see what we get, if anything. I don't think we're going to get the same luck in the 10 year. <clears throat> oh, spoke too soon. Okay. So there it is. So what you're noticing is across asset classes, right? A similar style of TA is actually bringing you a similar conclusion, right? In other words, at 4.08, the 10-year note yield, which again is not necessarily subservient to short-term rates, right? Longer-term interest rates can not rise even if the Fed is tightening, right? In other words, the long-term interest rates can go, eh, you know what, maybe this has gone a little bit too far. So even if you guys are going to hike short rates, longer term rates can actually stay lower or not go as high. So we'll, interesting that again, the first reaction to numbers is often wrong, right? I mean, the 10 you note went from 388 to 408 and now it's back to 390. Okay, this is why Bitcoin reversed, right? Macro, the macro picture just decided, hey, maybe this is different. This is different. Like maybe this was the top, right? Now let's go back over here and talk about media extremes. Horrible, brutal, a disaster for Democrats, a shocked Wall Street reacts to today's CPI number, today's CPI nuclear bomb, okay, it's inflation, it's a nuclear bomb, and it's Jover making fun of the president of the United States over the inflation number. So when you start seeing horrible, brutal, shocked, nuclear, Jover, it's time to go the other way. It's time to go the other way, right? Everybody on token metrics, tired of seeing this probably, but I just can't stop loving it. I just can't stop loving the top of Bloomberg Business Week, right? The mother of all tops. Here we are. Can't stop the dollar. Can't stop it. You just can't stop the dollar. When they write stuff like this, when it's Jover and it's nuclear, it's done. It's done. That's it. I mean, seriously, I, I remember buying a technical analysis textbook a long time ago. This is the triangle. This is support and resistance. Blah, 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 blah. If you see the media write, oh, this trend is amazing, out. Or it's, oh, it's all over, you know, despair. Jover in. Okay. So Kasaitan wants to know, Bill, is this the bottom in BTC? Uh, if it's not, we're in trouble. Okay. I want to think that the bottom in Bitcoin is either in or will be in over the next five days. Okay. In other words, that doesn't mean you can't see 18 again because the market is in the range. The market's still in the range. It just left the range over the number. Now it's like back at the range. It's back inside the range. This is how range traders make money, right? 
They wait for emotional streams one way or the other, and they take advantage of that. Okay, what about the ape coin? Is there is there a future for ape coin? Yes, there is. Yeah, there is. Let me see if I can pull that up. I think anything that can be used as money has a future. An ape coin may be one of these like destroyed plays. Like when we do long-term price predictions, yeah, we're going to do Sheeb and Doge and Cardano, but I, I also want to do this. I want to do this because this is like metaverse connected. So again, you know, this is a four hour chart. Like, I, and this is, this is the ultimate freestyle work, right? This is how the work actually gets done. Sometimes when you have really volatile environments. Okay. So does ApeCoin have a future? Yes. Now, did everybody just give up on that future? I mean, think about it, folks. Okay, the September lows in ApeCoin was for something, 425, and they actually took it back down there for a possible double bottom, right? So ApeCoin's been down here three times, right? This was Celsius, right? September, and then again today. Now, sometimes triple bottoms don't hold, but I'm kind of cheering that this does make it because I don't think anyone wants to buy right now. No one wants to buy. No one. Okay. Which, you know, could be the perfect time to do it. Oh, by the way, right. People who have been listening uh, to the, to the regular market update on token metrics. Okay. have been hearing about hut mining. Okay, it's a Bitcoin miner. And how all of these Bitcoin, all these crypto stocks are dying to go up. They're just they're dying to go up. They want to go up. You know, just that the macro environment and things, they just won't let. It. But I mean, if, if if this green reversal, this engulfing candle that now covers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days. So if this thing closed where it is right now, you're going to have an engulfing pattern that engulfs seven trading days, which in candlestick terms can be a very powerful signal. So if these Bitcoin miners and related equities are up, even though crypto itself is down, this tends to make me feel more positive. Baby Whale wants to buy Solana. Driftless is noting you know, DXY is falling fast. Symmetry says DXY Ponzi bubble popping. Symmetry also says he thinks the bottom was in June at 17.5K. All right. Oh, someone says the, the greenest goblin said Sheeb is pumping. Well, if Sheeb is pumping, let's look at it. Wow, Sheep is pumping. Okay. So let's see what we can draw on Sheep, even though it's already pumping. We know that. Nope. Okay. So I can't get anything on Sheep, but here's what did happen at least from hidden pivot analysis. Let's try this. Let's try the Williams alligator. Okay, I didn't get anything off of that. However, I think the price action speaks for itself. If you have something, let's go to like a one week chart. If you have something like this, that's come all the way back down, basically to where it started. 
Like, think about this. Like, if you if you look at Sheeb weekly, right? First of all, the bottom was in in September, and it's deteriorated since. Again, Sheeb is now sitting on top of the range. It was back in in 2021. Now, I don't know how brave I want to get with this, right? <clears throat> Let's try fib circle analysis. So this is almost what we do in our price prediction videos. So I'm going to like try to offer some kind of hint, maybe. Okay. So nothing there as of yet. Okay. So the next big move in Sheeb may not be until, say, November. In other words, Sheeb is pumping now, and that's good, but overall, compared to what Sheeb really does, the next big pump may be November, assuming it continues to go sideways. And let's leave that as our tactical read for Sheeb. So somebody's calling Sheeb casino coin. Okay, people do like their meme coins. What I tell people is don't always spec, don't speculate excessively in a rate hike environment. Just because I think they're done, it doesn't mean they're done. Okay. All right, let's take a look at VIX. Let's take a look at fear. So this is fear in equities. This is definitely going to have something to do with crypto. This is something we did yesterday for our live webinar that we do. Let me see if I can get a different color on here. So there's a thinking about VIX and how does VIX work? Okay. When VIX, when, when you analyze VIX, you want to look at Bollinger Bands, right? So when you have a Bollinger Band in VIX, when you take out the top, you close above it. And then when you close below that, that's the signal that volatility has topped and stocks at bottom. And then, of course, there's usually one more push through and then that's it. Volatility falls as stocks rise. Now, over here, it was the same thing. You had this big move through the Bollinger Band, okay? And then over here, this is actually Bollinger Band textbook. You had like a, just a touch of the line and then VIX should come off, which is what's happening. Okay, now, will that stick? Uh, I actually think so, right? In other words, the market is like, you know what? We're buying the bad news. The bad news, it's Jover, right? The downtrend, the worry trade is Jover. That's it. Right. The Fed can do what it has to do. We're going to go the other way. Right. And it's a weird world when stocks are more volatile than crypto. Well, okay. Yeah. Crypto was down a lot today and it's back to unchanged, but stocks are actually up 2%. I keep saying, oh, you know, stocks have to have earnings season and they're constrained. And guess not. <laughs> guess not. Okay. Um, all right, so we have a shout out for, you know, Sologenics. Somebody is asking why the token metrics grade is high. Okay, we definitely appreciate the super chat. Okay, let's let me log in to token metrics and see if that's true or not. It's always good to show the site. Okay, one of the things that our customers benefit most from is the ratings page. So frequently I, I save this for customers, but this is the token metrics ratings page way <clears throat> where we show you what's, what's been trending. It's not just what's trending, but what our artificial intelligence <clears throat> is ranking in terms of like momentum plays. Okay, so at the top of this chart, You'll see all the major momentum plays like Ethereum name service, Stellar, Elrond. Like right now, they're they're down or they were down five percent. QNT, 
Okay. All of the, you know, convex finance. There are a lot of names in here that, you know, have actually been doing well, right? Before today, right? There was, there was the big hiccup today, but these were the, these were the ones that were trending heading into today. Okay. Like ribbon finance, XRP is in there. Right? XRP. XRP has actually been doing okay. More than okay. And the question is, is the legal victory priced in, in XRP? So let's just take a look at all the different things you can see in XRP on token metrics. So I like the TA, I like the TA part, obviously. Okay. XRP hit a buy signal on, you know, in September and it just kept right on going. Okay. You know, when our system is right, it's right. The get out signal was up here. Okay. In April. Then it chops around, the system gets chopped around, but when the trend starts, the system goes with it. That's the green dot. Now, when it comes to like relevant technical levels for XRP, XRP right now is trading at 47 cents or somewhere in that neighborhood. Now, this is not the best interface, but if you go back and you see XRP holding 45 cents, this level goes all the way back to 2018. Okay. So if we go over here and we look at XRP, we want to see XRP holding above 45 cents. That's the bottom line. That is the bottom, bottom line. Okay. Right now, XRP is holding, let me get rid of this Bollinger band. Okay. So Epic wick down to 43 cents get everyone out <clears throat> and then bring it back. Kind of classic if you think about it. Now, what I don't like in XRP is this condition where, you know, this momentum indicator is slumping a little bit, but it's not that bad. Okay. The old range is acting as support, especially if you draw it this way. Okay. This is like the top of the range from May and you can see here in XRP where boom, right? It wicks down, tests the top, and then comes back. Okay. So on token metrics ratings page, if you're just like, okay, I need to see what's going on in crypto, that's the page to go to. Okay. The other thing I wanted to look at was QNT. Okay. I understand QNT has kind of like a, like almost a religious right. Uh, a religious type following, like the people who are into QNT, they are really into QNT. Okay. <clears throat> now I've also talked about <clears throat> in the token metrics market update and webinars that you really got to be careful with this coin. <clears throat> if it takes out 166, because this coin takes out 166. The next resistance is at 189. I mean, there is nobody home. Let me just confirm that before I get too excited. Right. So if QNT gets above one, 166, okay, QNT can start gapping, right? What does that mean? Well, it means, you know, above 166, it goes 180, 189, and 206. So it can take out three levels and be go from 166 to 206. Now, why would it do that? Well, maybe because there's a head and shoulders bottom. I can't draw on these particular charts. Maybe I can go to live TA on trading view. But this is a shoulder, this is a head, and this is a shoulder. Okay. And they broke this neckline and it's breaking out. So let's go over here to QNT. And again, if you like this style for the uh, market update, where literally I'm figuring it out on camera, make sure you hit the like button, hit it. Okay. So for QNT, Okay, let me label this the QNT daily chart. 
do not underestimate what these payment systems can do, right? Everyone's sick of the dollar. Everyone's sick of the Fed. So let's talk about how we draw the head and shoulders bottom on QNT, okay? Normally, <clears throat> you'll try to find something where the, the neckline is downward sloping, okay? Then what you do is you take this tool and you project that distance from the bottom of the head to the neckline. And then, thanks to trading view, I no longer have to go through a clumsy verbal explanation to this. I just simply drag this over and you project, right, that distance from the point of the breakout, which gives you something like 228. Okay. So is 228 possible? Okay. So here's QNT. Okay. And it looks like the entire debacle give up trade started from 225. So that means QNT can run home to where the debacle started. Right. It started at 225. And it can just go right back to 225. Okay. Like there, there is the high uptick here. Like that was it back in December. And then it was just down. Okay. That can just be completely unwound. Why? Fast payments, XRP. You know, everyone hates central bank digital currencies. I don't. If people need to find an alternative for the dollar, let them. Let them, you know, anybody that gets onboarded into a CBDC. Yeah. Okay. The government may surveil what you do on this phone with the C, you know, with the CBDC on it, but maybe you'll get another phone and get into blockchain and crypto. It's like onboarding people into crypto and it's a dollar alternative, which can save people from the unbelievable suffering of the rising dollar and the, the, the tightening fed and the higher food prices. Just a brief reminder with Vladimir Putin, we walked into a trap. Whereas you ask yourself, how did we get here? How did this CPI number get as bad as it was to digress? Well, let me explain it to you, right? Vladimir Putin makes a geopolitical move. He makes an aggressive move, not very popular, okay? The world reacts, cancel culture, sanctions. Everybody cuts Russia off. Russia cuts off grain exports from, from Ukraine and Russia, along with oil and fertilizer, causing food prices to skyrocket, right? In an environment where everyone thought inflation was transitory and they were printing right up until they couldn't anymore. So Putin knew inflation was going to go up. He knew the Fed was going to hike rates. And he knew the more pressure he exerted, right? The more pressure he exerted, the more they would hike rates, the higher food prices go, the more they would hike rates. And he's trying to break the Western hyper-financialized system. His system is backed by gold, okay? For better or for worse, right? We're trying to make the dollar go up, which hurts gold. And he is trying to hurt our financial system. And he's doing a good job in the UK, right? Because their pension system disorder has not been, as the English say, sorted. It has not been sorted yet. So you cannot have, as we told the premium customers yesterday, you cannot have Vladimir Putin and Jerome Powell on the warpath at the same time. Jerome Powell raises Fed funds to 5%. He's essentially doing Vladimir Putin's bidding and breaking some, something in our financial markets when 5% Fed funds is not going to solve the current problems. It's not. Yes, they needed to hike rates. Yes, they're going to hike rates one more time. Fine. But if they go beyond what they're going to do in November, they're making a mistake. I actually think the best thing that they can do is do less than people say they're going to do in November, do 50 basis points, sell mortgage-backed securities, do something underneath the hood, and just signal that, hey, let's everybody calm down. Because if you were going to hit a Western democracy, you would do it near an election. Vladimir Putin and Jerome Powell on the warpath at the same time, something breaks. So let's sum it up. Inflation data came out today, right? Bad. Market, all markets went down. 
all markets came back. Why? Because inflation, when it comes to rent and food, is not something that can be stopped by rate hikes. So the Fed's folly has to come to an end now or when they break something in the very near future. Is, the, is 17 to 18K the bottom in Bitcoin? It could be. I am not interested in shorting Bitcoin. Maybe I'll regret saying that. I'm really not interested in it. Okay. I'm, I'm actually interested in seeing if I can pick it up on a dip over the next five days and see if we can get a bounce into the election. I like Bitcoin. I like gold. I'm hoping the dollar and interest rates, long term interest rates, have topped. That's my read for today off CPI. We'll see if that's right. Tune in. Astrobot Discord Alpha on Monday. Okay. Market update every day on token metrics on a private YouTube link. But I'm happy to be here on YouTube for you guys. If there's anything you're looking for or want, make sure you, you leave a comment. Hit the like button on the way out and turn on alerts because we're doing long-term price prediction videos. So we've done long-term price predictions on Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polkadot, which has been the most popular, Solana and Avalanche, and we have more in the queue. So subscribe to the channel and hit the like button on the way out. I'm your host, Bill Noble. We will see you next week.